It is 7th of October the year 2017. A very good afternoon and welcome to the Touchline, of course, a program that comes to you every Saturday from 12 to 2, keeping you posted with the latest in sports happening all over the world across several sporting disciplines. And of course, with me is my fellow Masketeer, Robert Osora. Have you been? Perfect. Easy, man. Yeah. You're looking nice. What's lined up this afternoon? I've been watching Ray Donovan for a better part of my life, so decided, I decided to go for Ray Donovan. And you've been there throughout the week. Or nowadays, you appear when it matters most. I haven't seen you for a while, man. That is how my work works. Of course, you can interact with us on our social media platforms. Be part of the program and keep your submissions coming. Of course, my Twitter handle at Wasike Maxwell at Osoro, but at Touchline Y25. And of course, as usual, your feedback will be abundantly appreciated. Keep uh, being part of the show. And of course, we also have a new SMS line 22165, starting with the word Touchline. And of course, our WhatsApp messaging line 0700345457. Osoro, Robert, what's lined up as far as sports pages is concerned? Well, it is a big weekend because this is March day 18 of the World Cup qualifiers. After today, we'll be knowing the 32 countries that will be heading to Russia 2018. After 47 years, Mexico 1970, Argentina might be out of the World Cup. Can that be? We'll be having that discussion a little bit later on because it's a World Cup qualifier weekend. But we start our sports pages with the reinstatement of Nakmar FC and Zuke Richo back into the Kenya Premier League. They are back into the Premier League. Of course, remember, I could judge John Mativo had overturned the 18 league formation saying that the former president Sam Nyamwea, a memorandum of understanding, had indicated that the top tier was to consist of 16 teams. But later, a few days later, after Football Kenya Federation went to court to appeal, the High Court, the Court of Appeal finally rescinded that particular decision and reinstating them back to Kenyan Premier League, temporarily waiting for the final decision, which will be ruled on November 3rd. And as we speak right now, of course, Nakumat and Zuke Richo, which had been promoted to the top tier from NSL, are eligible to take part in KPL matches up to November 3rd. Well, they'll be going on with their matches. The question will be the 16 versus 18 team league. Rivalry is back into the game and we'll be having the president of Football Kenya Federation himself, Nick Mwendo, to give us his thoughts on what he thinks about the 16 versus 18 because it's his office that started this conversation. Now, it is in the judicial courts. The sports tribunal is out of the picture. We'll wait to see how that one goes. And on. I keenly followed the proceedings of the court and immediately after the verdict, Football Kenya Federation President Nick Mwendo said that it's high time football is played on the pitch rather than, you know, uh, being uh, in court battles, which is not something that you know should augur the development of football and growth of the same in the country. And of course, having spoken even to representative of both Nakumat and Zuke Richo, they are optimistic, saying that their main task now is to remain in top tier. Now that you know the court of appeal has come to their rescue, and considering their being in the top tier uh, for the first time, having been promoted, remember it's two teams, that, uh, four teams that were promoted, Nzoya, Football Club, Karyobank, Sharks, Nakumat, and Zoo, and they remain buoyant that they wouldn't get relegated at the end of the season. It's something that we want to be keeping an eye on and see how it pans out. Well, we are Swiss taking football still. Arambe Stars lost 2-1 to, to Iraq in a friendly match in Iraq, but now they'll be back in action tomorrow against Thailand. How will they be faring on that one? Of course, Iraq, the Lions of Mesopotamia, and remember that the champions of uh, Asian Cup in 2012, Farambe starts playing against them on Thursday night. The uh, former Gourmet striker Michael Ingenio Lunga coming to the rescue to score the consolation for the visitors on 86 minutes after the host had sealed the game during the first half. I don't know from your take, what do you think about that game? Several people have castigated uh, the local management of football, saying that Iraq is not a powerhouse to play against the Rambe Stars if our football has to grow. I don't know from your own end, what do you think? Uh, for me, I have no problem with playing a friendly because the Rambe Stars have a chance to test their things against a team that is a, a powerhouse in their own right in their region. And if a Rambe Stars can get a chance to be in a friendly with that team, no problem. They had nothing to do, just present your players and play football. Against Iraq, of course, Stanley Okumbi, Arambe Stars tactician, the national team head coach, decided to play Yese Were, Zesco United frontman, alongside Eric Johanna, former Madara United player, in the attacking department, while Michael Ingenio Lunga playing at the back of the two. What do you think about that particular tactical approach of the head coach? 
I think it's because the twin striking force of Olunga and Jesse Were has not materialized. We have not seen it work very much and produce goals. And now if he's pushing Eric Joanna in front and Jesse Were in front, it's all about saying, can this pair work and Olunga behind them? That can it work? But for Olunga, is usually the pinpoint striker. He's not the one placed behind the strikers is usually the one leading the front line. But it is the coach's tactics. You have to live with them. You have to live with them. Those are words of Robert Osoro, my co-host, during the Touchline show on Y25. For Max Olwasike is my name. And, of course, we're talking matters, sports, and uh, dissecting on sports pages what has been happening uh, both local and beyond in the world of sports. And, of course, something that also had to be noted from that game is the midfield partnership of Samuel Onyango got my Ulindi Stars uh, player alongside uh, Zesco United Anthony Akumi in absence of Victor Mugubi Wanyama Tuna Motspass uh, midfield linchpin. I know you streamed the match. What do you think about the pair of the two in absence of Wanyama? They haven't played for a very long time. Wanyama has been the one who has been in that midfield but my thoughts will not be good enough for this one. We'll be having Ronnie Aloy and Simon Mulama to give us a bit of analysis in that game because not everybody had a chance to watch that match. It is, it is uh, Ronnie Aloy, a residential panelist, alongside Gigi Omondi. They will be joining us shortly after this particular segment to talk about matters Kenyan Premier League and, of course, international football. Remember, it's an international break. Several World Cup qualifiers are lined up. This afternoon, Ghana, uh, the Black Stars, playing against the Uganda Cranes. We shall be looking forward to see how that pans out. And remember, international football, a lot is happening. Gerard Pique with Catalonia trying to push for independence on their own and he's insisted that he's ready to be excluded out of the Spanish squad despite featuring for them yesterday in their three nil victory against the opponents. Of course, it's something that we want to be keeping an eye on and see how that develops. Away from that, of course, Malkia strikers there in Yaounde, Cameroon for their CAVB, African Qualification, African Cup of Nations, which also doubles up as FIVB World Cup Qualification in 2018. The squad was named at the Kasarani and, of course, being boosted by one of the betting platforms coming to their rescue as far as kitting and residential uh, finances are concerned. You attended that particular press. How was it? For a very long time, every sport in Kenya suffers from the same. These ladies were training in somewhere they don't have electricity. They did not have water. And you wonder, Kasarani hosted the IWF and I think all those amenities are not there. But when we spoke to the girls, when Sport Pesa came in, they paid for their residential training. Everything was up and running. The team was named. And now they're off to Cameroon. They'll be facing off Nigeria before they play Senegal. And now they have a chance to retain their trophy because the Women African Nation Championship is their trophy. They are going to defend it. But also, try to fight off the likes of Egypt because Egypt is the one that made Malkia not go to the Olympics. So the 12-team girl team is really up and running to go to Cameroon and come back with that trophy and make sure they're in World Cup in Japan come next year. Remember, they have been crowned continental champions for the nine times and probably they will be looking forward to be crowned for the tenth time. A squad of 12 players was named by head coach Joseph Munala being assisted by, uh, of course, uh, former head coach who is now the technical director. And, of course, uh, the unfamiliar inclusion in the squad is immaculate Jemutai, formerly of Weaverbad High School in Kitale and now playing for prisons. The full squad has uh, Jane Washu and Janet Wancha as the setters, right attackers Violet Makuto and Immaculate Jemutai, the unfamiliar inclusion. Masi Moim, of course, captaining the squad, Noel Murambi, Leonida Kasai and Evelyn Makuto. Then middle we have Teresa Atuka, Praxidis Agala, the veteran, and Edith Wisa. Then Libero, we have Agrippina Kundu. Of course, it's in Pool B, that is Kenya, the Malkia strikers alongside Senegal, Nigeria, Congo and Tunisia, and they will be opening there fixtures this afternoon against Nigeria uh, fixture, Joseph Manala is optimistic they will win and carry home three maximum points. Well, the FIBA basketball zone five is also happening in Uganda and we had two of our clubs in Uganda, that is the Kenya Post Authority, the Queens and also the Queens of Equity Bank there. And today we might be seeing them, KPA being crowned the winners of this competition if USIU lose to KCCA. So Kenyan teams are dominating basketball, not only locally, but not only in East Africa, but the entire continent as well. 
Yeah, let's see if they'll bring that trophy back home. And now that Polo Tula, the Kenya Basketball Federation, has come into National Olympic Committee of Kenya as the member, probably will be trying to use the same platform to restore the lost glory of basketball. It is something that was in the knowledge of public domain in the past, but we've seen standards of basketball dwindling drastically, and it's something that has to be addressed, considering that we have plenty of potential, especially in our universities, USIU, Strathmore, doing very well. Well, one thing we realized from the new office that came in for NOC, everybody was saying we need every sport to be represented at the Olympics. So hope w that basketball will come to the fold and also go to the Olympics because when it comes to continental basketball, Kenya is not that tough. Let's not lie about that. You go there playing even the top five when they are called down to South Africa or Angola, Kenya is just against them in that tournament. If we can do our best and get Kenya to Olympics, good for us. Kenya is not that tough. Of course, the Kafa Senior Challenge Cup happening in the country later this year. Good riddance, especially after Kenya failed to host Chan, a tournament meant for local best players. He are marked for early next year, starting 12th of January, three-week competition. And of course, we've seen Sekafa Secretary General Nicholas Musonya alongside FKF top honcho Nick Mwendwa crisscrossing several parts of the nation, you know, trying to partner with county governments during the midweek. They were at Kakamega, trying to inspect Buhungu Stadium alongside weekly fan beds of Paranya, and it's all systems go. You think we're ready? Well, it has been two years since we Sekafa <laughs> happened, not in Kenya. It was the last time Sekafa was in Ethiopia in 2015. So for two years, when the best regional football competition is not happening in the east african nations you are suffering because right now we have got only uganda in the world cup qualifiers we had only uganda and ethiopia going for the africa cup of nations other countries like kenya rwanda lying in the cold now sakafa is the only tournament that they have they can play and if it's coming back Good readers for all of us. Good readers for all of us. The Kafa Senior Challenge Cup, of course, is marked for later this year. Kenya will be taking part. I spoke with Nicholas Musonye yesterday, and probably that package will be relayed later on in the program. It is said several nations have confirmed participation. To Totally 12 countries looking forward to take part and, of course, inviting other countries from beyond East Africa, Zambia, mm -hmm. and even Zimbabwe look set to take part in the championship. And, of course, remember, in case it's hosted in Kenya, then KBC Channel 1 alongside Y25 will exclusively bring you the action. If Zambia is coming for Sakafa, that's good because they need good competition in Sakafa, not <coughs> only East African nations. But away from... Sekafa coming back, we got to go to the cancellation of the Safari 7s for this year, all because of the political climate in the country. According to the organizers of the Kenya Rugby Union, they are saying the election is, is on the 26th of October and the Safari 7s is slated for November. That time frame does not work with them when it comes to organization. It will be the first, first time Safari 7 is not uh, happening since its inception in 1996. Remember, the return presidential poll slated for October 26 and the political climate is not that conducive probably to favor uh, several countries which had confirmed participation, Western province and even ca representatives from Fiji and even the Saf Shuja 7, the defending champions, had all, all confirmed taking part and it was slated for November 3rd, and we shall be looking forward to hear from Kenya Rugby Union through Richard Omuela, the chairperson, to communicate on what the way forward is. Probably it can take place later uh, next year. Possibility? Well, the, the, that possibility is not going to work because the Safari 7s and the circuit itself here in Kenya is made as for the build-up for the 7 series when it starts on in Dubai. Now, the best one was it ends with the Safari 7s, the boys go back to camp and go to Dubai and start the circuit. Now, if the Safari 7s is put on hold, that late stage is when it's going to happen or not going to happen might not work with the timetable of the boys who are going for the 7th circuit. The touchline on Y254, Maxwell Wasika and Robert Ozoro are taking you through. And remember, you can interact with us and be part of the program. Coming up next, after we just take a short commercial break, we want to be coming with the in-depth analysis of KPL and international football, Ronnie Aloyo and George Omondi and Aman, who just pocketed uh, probably whooping amount of cash, which I'm not ready to mention, you know, because of the squabbles 
I'm going through financially, will be joining us <laughs> on set to dissect about that. It's the touchline on Y254. A short commercial break. We shall be back. <laughs>